Hi there, friends. As I said, you've stumbled into a Net Squared Tech for Good meetup. So I'm Eli. I'm the Net Squared Global Community Manager, um, which means I get to be the champion and cheerleader for people like Jenna who are leading these communities. Um, these Net Squared meetups are all a program of TechSoup, which I'll tell you a little bit more about in a moment. But the shorthand version of it is a nonprofit like yourself that helps other nonprofits get, implement, and use technology. And when I said there was a global network of these Tech for Good meetups, it's true. Here's a map which is a little bit stale, but it, you know we actually have about 100 plus chapters across 41 countries, each meeting on a monthly-ish kind of schedule. They're not all as hardcore, of course, as the North Texas group, um, coming together to host events for people in the nonprofit to help them build their technology skills, which means let us know in the chat where you're coming from, because you know maybe you're you're in Atlanta, maybe you're in London, England. There are groups all over there, and we'd love to connect you to your closest user group. Like every community, we've got some rules. Number one, we welcome everyone. Number two, we put community first because we're here to support each other. Number three, we are here to build stronger nonprofits. So the technology is sort of the lens we use as we build these events. But ultimately, we're not a tech meetup. We're much more about a nonprofit meetup looking into how tech can support your mission. Number four, we invite your participation. We think that everyone has something to learn and contribute, and we would love to put you to work. I'll tell you a bit more about that in a moment. And finally, we treat each other with kindness and respect. So the chat window is open today. Love for you to throw your contributions in there. But before you get typing, just take a moment and say, am I bringing my kindest and most empathetic self to this interaction? If the answer is yes, type away. So we totally need your help. This group is run by a team of volunteers. And coming up with an event idea every month is hard. Um, maybe you can want to get involved. Maybe you've got a fabulous event idea or presenter or case study you want to bring to the group reach out in the chat and we'll follow up. Or maybe you wanna take notes um, so we can share some of the, what we've learned from these events after the fact. Um, or maybe you are a wizard at marketing events, in which case, let's get more people in the room. We'd love your support on that. So here's a quick summary of TechSoup. There's software, there's hardware, there's services, all are focused around making sure that you succeed with technology as a nonprofit. And what TechSoup has done is partner with about 120 of the largest technology companies. We're talking the DocuSigns, the Googles, the Zooms, the Microsofts of the world. And so what happens is you create your free TechSoup account, and we use that to verify that you're a nonprofit. Think of it as writing a very short grant application. But of course, once you've written that one application, you can actually use that exact same verification for any of these technology partners. So think of it as the dream of writing the one grant application and it actually does work for every foundation. It's just, that's the idea of TechSoup to really expedite your access to these discounted and donated products. And this is what it can look like practically. So say you're a nonprofit with 10 staffers, this is the kind of savings that could happen um, looking at this regular kind of bundle. And as you can see, it's kind of ridiculous. It's definitely worth your time. There are many events being plotted and schemed. Right now, the next one is planned from March 31st around email marketing best practices. But there's going to be lots more coming soon, um, so stay tuned. And with that, I'm going to get out of the way and pass you over to your host, Jenna. Thank you so much. And we are very glad to have Brian, who is on the Square team as well, present today's session. And so Brian, gonna pass it over to you to talk about accessibility. Okay. All right, let me turn the screen share on here. All right, can everyone see my slide deck? Okay, well, today we're gonna talk about accessibility 
and you're going to learn what that exactly means, why it's important, and what are some what are some things I can do to make myself compliant, and how do I even know if I'm compliant already? Um, but before we get into that, uh, let me tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is uh, Brian Daniels. I'm a project manager here at Square. Um, I've been in the web space since, uh, I don't know, 2007, 2008. Um, so I've mostly played project manager, but we focus on um, open source technology. And I've been taking over some accessibility, UI, UX, um, analytics, and stuff like that. So what is an accessible website? So accessibility basically means that your website is accessible by anyone with a disability. So in many cases, um, I think that comes down to uh, the visually impaired and the hearing impaired. So I like to think about my audience and ask myself a few questions um, when I'm putting content together or even just looking at a web page. Uh, things like, uh, can the person viewing this use a mouse? Maybe they can't see. Maybe they um, have some uh, disabilities related to their um, limbs or something like that. Can they use a keyboard? Some people only use mice. Keep that in mind. Um, can they watch any videos? Again, maybe they um, have a vision uh, impairment and they can't even see these videos. Or they have a hearing impairment and they can see them, but they can't hear anything that they're saying. And uh, do they have any control over the media? By that, I mean, um, you know, can they pause things? Can they minimize things? You wanna avoid things um, like sound automatically popping up when you visit a web page. You'll see a lot of these sites that have a little video pop up in the corner, um, which could disorient someone that, um, you know, has a, a vision disorder. Maybe they can't even see a video pop up and they're like, well, where is all this noise coming from? How do I make it stop? Um, and then screen readers, this is a big one. So um, a lot of blind people use a screen reader, which basically is a tool that can go down your web page and, and read the content. But one of the things to keep in mind there is, is the screen reader going to read the content like I expect them to read it? And so what I mean by that is very often um, some tags or some other information will be left out of your HTML and the screen reader may get confused. Like, is this a link? I don't know, the tags aren't marked up correctly. Is this um, an image of a, of a person? I don't know. So keep that in mind. And then along those same lines, does your web page rely too much on color or imagery? So to give you an example of that, um, you know, uh, one uh, vision impairment is color blindness. And there's all sorts of different kinds of color blindness. Um, I'll send you all a link <laughs> so you can see them all, but there's way more than I originally thought. And so you don't wanna rely on colors such as, you know, click the green button to continue or have um, your page full of images with text on them. Um, Cause again, screen readers can't read text on images unless you have the right tags on them. So ADA compliance is the American Disability Act. And um, it's important to say uh, that it affects anyone in the US. Jacqueline, I'm sorry, I don't know about Toronto. Um, but nobody is exempt from being ADA compliant. It doesn't matter how many employees you have, how many people visit your website or where, um, your target audience is, if you are based in the US, um, you have the potential to have a lawsuit filed against you. Can you fly under the radar? Yes, maybe, but you should be aware um, that something could happen. As a matter of fact, I've heard recently that um, there's been a little bit of a boom in what they call website chasing lawyers. I'm not trying to scare you all or anything, but there's actually people that go out there and search for issues like accessibility, GDPR, and then file lawsuits to get some extra money in their pockets. So 
anyone that has uh, like an e-commerce website, a financial website, government website, healthcare, you need to be um, particularly concerned about ADA compliance. WCAG guidelines are technical guidelines that can help you um, fall in line with ADA compliance. So I wanna be clear, there is a separation there. So just because you're meeting these WCAG guidelines does not mean that you're meeting the law of ADA. These guidelines kind of help you get there, um, but it's, it's a good understanding of what the ADA compliance is and which one of these guidelines you need to conform to. And there's different levels of conformance um, so for example, they have, they rate them like a level A, level AA, level AAA. So there's different types of levels that you can meet based on um, whatever criteria you're trying to meet. And for ADA, the, uh, the target right now is AA um, conformance. And we'll, we'll take a look at that a little bit more. Um, so Again, legally, you are supposed to um, be compliant. And the only way that somebody would probably find out is if you get reported. So level A is very basic. So um, I like to say it focuses on navigation and uh, readability. So just to give you uh, some examples, navigation. Um, people uh, use keyboards, they use the tab to get from links to links on a web page. Are those um, tabs going in order of the web page? Um, there's some content that appears on every page, right? Like our main menu, our navigation. Um, if we're using a screen reader or um, something like that, do we want them to read the navigation every page that they come to? No, probably not. So they need the ability to skip the navigation um, if they choose to. And uh, readability uh, gets into font sizes. Um, like we touched on earlier, are there alternative text for images? Are there um, captions for videos? Uh, things like that. When you get down to the level AA, it extends to color and text. And um, the primary things are um, related to contrast. And I'll show you all some tools there. So this is basically text and uh, background colors laying on top of each other. They need to have enough contrast so somebody with a form of color blindness can actually see the content. And then level AAA, um, honestly, very few people meet this requirement. And it is very hard, if not almost impossible to make your entire website level AAA compliant. Typically, um, businesses will focus on a page to make it that compliant. And these are gonna be um, more public institutions like we touched on healthcare, financial services, government service. They may be required to have an extra level of conformance. So I have some tools that'll help you um, basically scan your web page and figure out what are the issues that I have already. So we're going to take a look at one of these, a couple of these. Okay, I've just got a random website pulled up here, one that I know is not that great, <laughs> just for demo purposes. So there is a Chrome extension called Axe. And, and I'm sorry, let me clarify. I'm using the Chrome extension. There actually are extensions available for Firefox and Edge. And we'll give you those links in our, our follow-up here. So Axe works with uh, the uh, developer tools. So in Chrome, I'm going to just inspect to open up my developer tools. And then, There, I've got a delay from Zoom. Okay, 
So once you have your um, developer tools open and the extensions installed, there's this new tab here, Axe Dev Tools. So we'll click on that. And then here you get a couple of on options. Like, do I just want to click on a little block to see if, if it's compliant or do you want to scan the whole page? So we're going to scan the whole page here. Of course, depending on the uh, length of the page, the type of content, it could take a while. Shouldn't take this long. I think, uh, I think the network's slowing me down. Oh, Murphy's Law. <laughs> All right. So, oh, shoot. <laughs> So here we have a little breakdown of uh, the number of issues. And over here on the right, we can actually see what some of these um, specific issues are as it relates to this page. So you also have a little um, toolbar over here on the left. So there's a little breakdown of the requirements that you need to meet. So let's just take a look at images must have alternate text. So here we see um, that there is an image here served up by Amazon that does not have any alternative text. So I'm not sure which image this is. Let's say it's the, uh, the lady that was on top of the mountain in the yoga pose. Well, a screen reader is not going to know what that picture is, right? So it's best to have some alternative text that describes the image. So you may wanna say woman on mountain doing yoga or something like that, just so um, people that are, are, are visually impaired know what the images are. And you can just keep going down the list, um, finding specific issues. Now this tool only works on a page by page basis. So it does not scan your entire website. Um, you would have to go page by page. So with that being said, um, I would say focus on your most visited pages first, you know, your homepage, obviously. And then um, if any of you have gotten into Google Analytics after my last presentation, then you can view the uh, most visited pages there and start working down the list. Let's see if I can move you guys. Okay. The next tool I want to show you is called WAVE, W-A-V-E. And I'll give you links to these as well, um, but they have ex browser extensions that you can install. And it's very similar to the Axe one, except it gives you different information here. So when we use um, WAVE, we get the toolbar that pops up. And then you also see all these little icons over here on the right. So these can give you um, a, visual, um, a visual indication of the areas that you need to fix. So if you were to click on one of these, it says, okay, the issue is very low contrast. I get that. We have a light gray on a white background. So maybe we want to address that. There's something here on these social icons. Okay, so an empty link. An empty link is kind of similar to um, an image alt text. So in your, your code where you create the link, you have the option to put um, a description about what the link is. So to be compliant, you should have a little bit of a description for every link that you have. So that way, when a screen reader comes to it, they know there is a link and have some indication about what they're going to see when they click on it. So great example here would be, you know, visit the blah, blah, blah Facebook page. And you can also see that they're color coded. So these are related to the uh, details over here on the left. Let's say focusing on errors should be the number one um, 
the number one item to look at. But if you wanna get down to, uh, let's say like this AAA compliance, you'll wanna look at each one of these things. And so that's just the summary. They have a details version here. It's a little overwhelming, um, but if we were to click on any of these, it'll actually scroll to the area that it's referencing. And then it groups them together by the types of issues that it finds. Um, and then structure. So again, back to screen readers, they expect, um, they also expect like a hierarchy of information. So at a rudimentary level, this is uh, related to headings. So making sure that your heading tags are in order. You wanna have your H1 at the top because that's the most important thing on the page. Your H2 is next, you know, that's, that's like the, the meat of the section that you're reading or whatever. And then, you know, go on down the line, just so the uh, H1, H2, H3s have some sort of hierarchy or meaning to them rather than I just use this one because I like the font size. Um, along with that, um, excuse me, I'm trying to find an example here. Along with that goes with um, other elements. So exa for example, um, bullet point lists. If you were to just write out some bullets, maybe you type them out with a little asterisk instead of actually using a real bullet. Where a screen reader is gonna read all that is like one sentence with an asterisk in it. So you wanna make sure that you're using the proper HTML markup um, for these cases. So when a screen reader gets to a bullet point list, it knows it's a bullet point list and can kind of uh, you know pause and leave a little bit of separation as it's, as it's reading it. So that, the user doesn't get disoriented. Okay, um, one of the other tools is called Spectrum. This is another um, browser extension. So let me just turn that on here. And this one is um, specific to color blindness. So here we have a drop down that popped up, all these different times of uh, types of color blindness. And this, this is the link that I'm gonna send you that describes each one of these if you're, if you're curious. So when you turn one of these on, it's gonna actually uh, show you the colors that this person is going to see that has this, um, this disorder. So if any of you can tell, it got a little bit lighter. Um, as I click through these, the colors are changing slightly. So some people can see, you know, green tones better than red tones and vice versa. So you can get a sense, maybe just run your um, page through this and make sure that you don't have, you know, like a completely black image or a completely white image that has no details. Um, and if you're unsure uh, what colors to pick to have the right amount of contrast, there is another website that gives you a tool to um, pick some colors and then tell you how compliant it is. And this will be in our follow-up as well, this link here. Um, okay, I picked the wrong page. Hang tight one second. Okay, well, I will have to follow up with uh, the link to that. I'm sorry about that. Um, essentially what this tool allows you to do is pick two colors. Let's say you pick a black, black uh, background color that's blue, and then you have some text that's maybe a light blue or a green. Um, it'll tell you, no, this isn't contrasty enough. It does not meet any of the requirements. And then let's say that you, um, pick a black background in white text, then it'll pop up and say, okay, this one is level A compliance, this is level AA compliance. And then you can keep playing with those colors until you get to the right um, level of contrast to meet the requirements. Okay. 
All right, let's jump back over to our slide here. So where do we go from here? First off, talk to your developers. They may already know um, that you uh, have some of these things in place, or they may not even know that they're required to do this at all. So share the list of requirements with them, ask them if we're doing any of things, you know, talk to them, how can we implement these things? Um, just, you know, have a candid conversation with them. Use the tools that I have just shown you. Um, so if you're unsure about a page or maybe it's a highly traffic page or one that's really important to your business or organization, use the tools to make sure it's compliant. There are very, uh, there are a lot of audit services out there um, that says that they'll scan your site and find any accessibility issues. Now, be aware of that because a, lo a lot of times they just run some sort of software or tool um, across the website and it doesn't always catch everything. A good audit service is usually done manually. So if you decide to look for one of those, ask them about how they conduct the audit audits and what type of information they're looking for. And a good auditor, one that's uh, you know, as thorough, uh, does some of these things manual, it's gonna be up into the four figures. So just be prepared for that. There's also um, a bunch of modules and plugins that are available for open source like um, Drupal and WordPress. And a lot of these give us some great tools out of the box. Um, you know, for example, adding these extra tags and stuff like that to links or images um, can get you there faster with some modules, but just don't rely on them for everything. They may give you the framework to do some of these things, but don't just install it and think that you're compliant, okay? You should still um, run your page through the tools, make sure that um, those modules are doing what you expect them to do. So if you need help, you can always reach out to us. We're gonna have this meetup posted in our blog section and we're gonna put all the links in here that we've talked about, the links to our, our tools. Um, and then if you have any further questions, you can fill out our contact form or reach out to us on social media. So without further ado, do we have any questions? Looking over here at the chat, if you have one, you can just pop it into the chat here. I would be curious to know um, for folks that are attending, what review or questions you've had with your own websites for the different organizations you're with um, in the process of this topic. I see this topic, Brian, as something with all those resources and everybody's sites being different. One of those that's kind of the, the take home exercise <laughs> of the amount it, that you cover, but how it's so different depending on the site that you're looking at and also um, kind of the support that exists. How much can you control yourself, the technical skill level? <laughs> One of those that's a, um, it the depends, it depends <laughs> as being yeah. an answer. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's difficult to touch on everything. There are a lot of um, a lot of items to conform to. I would say to meet the uh, uh, AA level of conformance, there's um, about thirty-five to forty um, items that you have to meet. Another reason why uh, don't just rely on a, a tool or a service. Make sure you're meeting all of them. So I just noticed in the chat that Pete commented that he's been on talks like this before and the problem is it's massively overwhelming. So mm -hmm. I'd love Brian if you could just say what are like two or three first steps because it is massively overwhelming and yeah. it actually surprises me that there's actually solutions for any kind of disability, which is awesome. I, you know, 
many people probably would not just think that, oh yeah, there might be people that are blind that need to look at my website. There's solutions for that. People that are deaf that can't see videos, there's solutions for that. Mm -hmm. So while it's overwhelming, it's also very gratifying to know that there are tools. Um, but back to the overwhelming side, what would you say is the maybe top two things people can do? Yeah, so um, some of these things you could consider, you know, set it and forget it. So for example, on the color contrast thing, you're not gonna have to do that all the time. You just make sure that your theme already supports those things. Um, adding like alt text to images, alternative text to images. There are services, like I think uh, Adobe has one that'll automatically generate that text for you. It, it is a paid service, but essentially it, it scans your image and knows this girl is on a mountain doing some weird standing thing. <laughs> I don't know if they'll know it's a yoga pose or not, um, but it'll automatically put that in there. So if you have multiple content uh, contributors, you don't have to worry about them typing something meaningful in there. Um, same thing with the heading hierarchy. Um, you know, visually, you want to make sure that there's um, some uh, differences between the different um, heading styles. And then, you know, after that framework set up, it is going to rely on your content editors to make sure that they're using those things in order. Um, so alternative text, big one, um, setting up your, um, your HTML to have um, hierarchy is another good one. And then um, I'd say contrast is probably the second one. You know, look for really glaring issues like gray on white, you know, stuff like that is a no-no. So, and then clicking through your page with the keyboard is, is nice, but um, again, if you have the correct hierarchy in place, then that's probably gonna naturally fall into place. It's a good question. And I do want to throw out there that a um, couple of things. First off, there will be some themes for these open source CMSs that say they're, um, you know, 100% compliant, you know, with like a WordPress theme or a Drupal theme. Um, that is all not always the case as well. They may be compliant in some areas, but not in all areas um, for you to meet ADA or um, whatever your, your local regulations are. Um, so uh, other services like, um, like a software service, let's say a Wix page or a Squarespace page, a lot of that stuff is already gonna be there for you. So they keep all that in mind um, as you're creating the content. If any of you have ever used either one of those tools, um, creating the content's fairly easy and um, the system just takes care of telling you image text is required, having the right um, hierarchy levels and stuff like that. Well, if there's no um, additional questions, unless there's other things you want to show, can um, either if there's other resources you want to get into in greater depth, or we can just um, send the links as a follow up, since a lot of these can be evaluated against everybody's individual websites that they have. Um, so what do you think, Brian? Um, yeah, and we didn't get deep into this, but I do have some modules um, for Drupal and a couple WordPress plugins that can help you as well uh, identify <clears throat> and then give you some tools to uh, have this stuff kind of happen automatically, like the image alt text. What uh, platforms are folks on website wise? You can put it in chat or just take yourself off mute. Sounds like those modules could be, you could just link to those in the follow-up resources. So yeah. Depending yeah, on the fine. sites people are on. I was gonna say we have a very shy group today. Yeah. Oh wait, <laughs> okay. here we go. 
We have a, we have a WordPress response. Yeah. Do you want to cover any of the WordPress ones? And then we'll link to them in the follow up. Um, so I do not have the names of them right now, <laughs> but there is a really good one that um, Pete, I guess this kind of answers your question. Um, there is a plugin that will scan your pages and say these are the items that you need to pay attention to. So some of these plugins um, will kind of have, for lack of better words, built in scanners. So they have one like that for WordPress and I know they have one similar for Drupal. So we'll, we'll put those links in the follow up. Does anybody not have an open source website? Like uh, not Drupal, not WordPress, something completely custom or Wix. I have a Squarespace website for my consulting firm. You should run it through one of those tools. And I see should definitely happens. run it through one of those tools. <laughs> yeah. Well, good. It sounds like we got a lot of open source people here. All right. Any other questions? Yeah, I say we give folks some time back and we'll have a bunch of resources to follow up in the recording of this training. The next training that we have is on um, nonprofit email marketing, which is happening on March 31st, another Wednesday, so last day of the month. We'll send out um, a reminder about that to get folks registered and working on finalizing the training schedule for this next quarter, so the next, next three months, April, May, and June. Yeah. yeah pete that's that's a great idea um for those of you that uh, maybe aren't paying attention to the the chat um pete's pete uh basically said that somebody should have a base theme or module um that gives developers um at least a partially accessible accessible website out of the box um now, with that being said, we may have to have different versions for different countries or something like that, but I think that's a great idea. It would be a game changer. So if you all do that, let me know. <laughs> Maybe we need to find a client that works in the disability space to help them write that grant. I think so. Well, thank you everyone who joined us today for the training. We'll hopefully have you on the 31st as well. And um, in the meantime, we'll send a follow-up by the end of this week with a link to the slides, the recording of this and the additional references that Brian referenced throughout. So thanks everyone. Enjoy the rest of your week. All right, thanks. Thanks guys. See you all in a couple of weeks. Bye.